You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 192 with Michael Giannoulis. Today we're talking about overcoming your challenges, whatever they may be. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, all of you amazing, abundant leaders out there? I am happy that you're here with me. Are you here with me? I don't hear you. <laughs> Sometimes I wished I wasn't talking on on, a, on this end of the mic and I was standing in front of you uh, talking to everybody and seeing all of your amazing, beautiful faces out there just looking back at me either in wonderment, like what the hell is this guy talking about, or completely 100% engaged and totally getting what I'm talking about over here but well in any case I know you're out there because I see your comments I truly appreciate the comments on Facebook Twitter Instagram uh, in the iTunes reviews and other reviews that I see out there just really really humbling and exciting because you're letting me know that what we're doing over here is making a difference when I say we I mean me and all of the guests and anybody else who's contributing Truly appreciate all that you do for Men of Abundance because I know many of you are talking about Men of Abundance. You're sharing it. I see that it gets back to me when somebody else uh, posts something about Men of Abundance and then somebody else shares that with me. Totally amazing. I truly appreciate that. Keep doing that because more men and women want to listen to Men of Abundance. And I do mean women. About almost 50% of the listeners of Men of Abundance are women. So I truly appreciate that. And that being said, I've decided that, you know, going back and listening to a lot of my episodes, I'm always talking to men. And this is Men of Abundance. But I do recognize that many women do listen to the show. And I greatly appreciate that because, quite frankly, I listen to a lot of women's shows as well. Well, not as many as I used to, but I do listen to women's shows because I want to get that perspective as well. And I appreciate that you ladies out there want to try to understand us a little bit more. I think men aren't as hard to understand as women, but (laughs) we'll leave that for another conversation. At any rate, ladies, I truly appreciate you being here as well. And I'm going to start using language to include the ladies as well. Because men, we do have our own Facebook community that we can go and communicate in that is at menofabundance.com forward slash members or click on the members tab at menofabundance.com to get access to our closed Men of Abundance Facebook community. That's where we're having the conversations continuing these conversations over there in that community. Now as usual we have an amazing guest today and I want to get right into it because we have a little bit of a long conversation, but it's really more Michael talking to me as it should be. He's got an amazing story about weight loss, his stutter, his business experience. And whether you've had a weight issue, a health issue, or even a stuttering issue in the past or not, this conversation is going to greatly benefit you because the principles that Michael talks about in this conversation is a talking about overcoming those challenges. So I encourage you to hang on to every moment of this conversation and absorb it and then possibly go back and listen to it again because I feel these principles really are that important. So our featured guest today, Michael Giannoulis, has overcome the odds and loves to share the story to inspire others. Mike is a serial entrepreneur, sought after speaker and trainer, a real marketing guru and world-class copywriter. His ads have produced millions in multiple industries over the last 12 years. His current company is on pace and actually has already exceeded the $40 million in gross revenues without selling any physical products. You can read much more about Michael's bio, his background, and get a free gift that Michael mentions at the end of this conversation at menofabundance.com forward slash 192. Men of Abundance, it is my honor to introduce you to Michael Giannoulis. Mike, welcome to Men of Abundance, brother. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Awesome. Where are you at in the world? 
I live in Tampa Bay, Florida. So Is that right? In the U.S. <laughs> yeah. It's a small world, man, because right now, as as we're talking, we're mid, we're actually late January, and um, I currently live between Hawaii and Tampa. Mostly Hawaii, but my family's in Tampa, um, finishing up some work here and stuff, so I dig Tampa. Right. We're, um, we're out in, right now we're renting in Valrico, but we're looking at relocating to Riverview pretty soon. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's not far from me. I'm in the Odessa area. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. I'm vaguely familiar. We've never lived in Tampa. This is brand new to us. Uh, so um, we've my family's been there since September, and I've been back and forth two or three times, three times. I'll be back again in March coming up. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty fun place, man. I love it. I awesome. love Orlando. Yeah, it's very nice there. <laughs> Anyhow, so I like to start the show out. Mike, pretty much the way I start out every single morning, and it just serves me so well to start out with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today, man? I mean, there's so many things. I'm thankful for my spouse. You know, she's been incredible for me, just been there for me through all sorts of times, ups and downs. We're, uh, we're coming up on our four year anniversary here, coming up soon. So that's, I mean, that's kind of always, you know, top thing. And, and I think right now, especially, I'm thankful for the team that I've built with my company. We just have such incredible, smart, dedicated people. And I know how hard that is. So I'm just so, so thankful for, for all of them. I, I think they actually make me look way better than I am, you know? Yeah, well, that's what uh, smart people do, right? They put smarter people around them, or at least people that are smarter in certain areas, and uh, yeah. extremely passionate regardless of, the, of, of their um, skills and intelligence, man. Passion goes a long ways, and I dig that. It's a, it's a great feeling to have that kind of a team around you, no matter what it is that you're doing, and I've been fortunate to have many amazing teams around me as well. So as we get into our conversation, one of the things I like to ask is, how would you describe yourself? Well, that's a great question. Um, I took a test a while back that really opened my eyes up to more of about who I am, and because it was always kind of things that I that I think I I understood, but I could never put it into words. So I, I took a test called the uh, Find Your uh, Strengths. Not sure if you've ever heard of that one. Um, it's it's based on a book called Strength Finders 2.0, and the real big thing that I took from that in the way that I now kind of describe myself is I'm an, I'm an achiever who loves to be creative with lots of ideas, um, extremely positive, probably almost to a fault sometimes, and um, I love to learn. So those are really key traits that, that I think just kind of influence who I am and the way that I interact with everyone that I meet, you know. I dig it. I've done many tests throughout my career and throughout my life. Um, I'm not sure that I exactly heard of that one, but I'm definitely going to look it up because some of the guys that I work with or everybody I work with, I take them through a values test and a, kind of a uh, so they can really figure out what their values are and what's important to them in life, and we kind of start from there. Um, but, man, when you just said that, you pretty much damn near – described myself <laughs> especially yeah, being know, positive to a fault man yeah I, I do find that there are certain types of people like we kind of are you know we all fall into certain uh categories and mm -hmm. and that's definitely true i mean i've met quite a few people like me and and um usually they're in similar type fields or doing similar type things you know so people like us we gravitate towards creating things you know starting up things and um, usually we like to really dig into because we enjoy mm -hmm. the process and, and, and that helps I mean I think that's how I got to be where I'm at is just that I, I had this natural inclination to really dive in and figure things out and I like it like for me I love reading books going to events um, and there's people that are like, how do you make yourself read so much? The truth is I don't. I enjoy it. You know, and I think that's <laughs> one of the hardest things that I think people people try to force themselves to do things. And, and sometimes that doesn't work because you've got to find what, what you like. And then over time, you can build on that and you could enjoy, it, you know, things like that. But I, I think too many times we, we try to force ourselves to be just like someone else. And that's just not the way that 
were made. You know, it's interesting that you say that. And later on, Morgan, I'm going to ask you a specific question about what you're reading that you'd like to um, recommend to our abundant leaders. But what type of stuff do you like to read when you are reading? You know, I love reading books on business, books on marketing, um, especially love old books on how to write copy. So that's how to write ads. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of that. I'm a, I've been a copy writer since about 2006 is when I got uh, started. And so I, I love that whole thing of, be, of being able to write stuff and influence people to actually buy. You know, that's like, it's almost like having a super power, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, beyond that, I, I also love, love, love uh, leadership books and books on f- philosophy and politics, but more from a political philosophy viewpoint, not so much the day-to-day right, left, you know, Republican, right. Democrat stuff, but mm-hmm. but the the more higher up stuff, you know, communism versus capitalism versus socialism, and, and how does that played out historically? And that's the other piece that I that I enjoy to read is historical stuff about uh, famous people or important people and. Um, the big events, yeah, those kind of things. again, right on track, man. When I was growing up, when I was a kid, I, I wasn't much into novels. The only novel I ever remember reading, well, I have read two actually. Um, what was that? They, they made it into a movie, and I can't remember the name. Outsiders. I read that one. I did like that because I kind of associated with it. That was kind of my lifestyle. It was the greaser side, not the so side. And uh. then um, I read some Tom Clancy novels as well, but. I was the kid that wanted to read the encyclopedia. I wanted yeah. an, I wanted a set of encyclopedias when I was a kid. And finally, when I was a young adult, I ended up buying that whole encyclopedia Britannica. And I think I paid like literally three grand for this thing. Never opened a box because about that time, the, uh, it, you know, the computers were coming out. And, you know, it's just I don't find that I just don't have enough time in the day to read all the stuff that I want to read. Uh, when yep. it comes, um, same thing. I love reading the same kind of stuff that you like to read as well, man. It just, I just love the information. I like novels; they're kind of cool. You can learn a lot from novels as well, but I just like the factual how-to and and factual information. Yeah, I, I try to read fiction, but it, I, I definitely don't uh, gravitate towards it. Um, I do read some books, you know. I tend to read, which is kind of odd, but I tend to read like the popular books of the time. So I, I was reading the Hunger Games and um, uh, those kind of books. You know, my wife, she's she loves to read mm-hmm. those type books. And so she'll update me on the books that she's read so I kind of know the stories. Because that's the thing I do. I love stories. I love the whole concept of being able to tell a story. I've studied a lot of the hero's journey and and those kind of things. So I do love story. I, I, I've actually, in my spare, 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 spare time, written screenplays, um, TV shows. I haven't really ever had the time to pursue those things, but just for my for for, for my fun, for my creative side. So I do enjoy it. I, I I have a book, a fiction book that's been on my to do list since about 2003. <laughs> so um, maybe we'll get to it someday yeah we'll see some great books out there my wife's always recommending various books to me and she's the same way a new movie will come out and i'll be like oh that looks like a pretty good movie because i know she's kind of into science fiction and that type of hunger games and other stuff like that and she goes yeah i read that book like three years ago and i'm like Mm -hmm. what it was a book yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, i had no idea man she reads so many books man it's unbelievable and all stuff like that she's completely polar opposite of me when it comes to reading but, um, you know, we're going to get into much more of your story. And before we do that, I really want to dig into this uh, kick in the gut moment. I dig into this point because anybody who's doing anything in life, I, I just want the guys to realize that you get kicked in the gut. And what you do with that either perpetuates you forward, it's a learning point, or it kicks you down and you stop what you're doing, anything that may have gotten you to that point. And that's why I like to highlight this kick in the gut moment from guys like you, because to, just to show that everybody has them, they're not all the same, but they are similar. And what you do with it is what really makes 
you know, your future what it is and your present what it is for that matter. So I'd like for you to share a kick in the gut moment with us and really make us feel that. Yeah, I mean, it's sad to say I probably have four or five or six of these. So I got to pick one, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that that is life, right? There's so many kicks in the gut. There's things that happen to us. And I think for me, and I'll just try to quickly set this because um, it's a, it could be a very, very long story. Um, but growing up my whole life, I was always overweight. I was a quote unquote, a fat kid um, to the point that in high school, you know, I was, I weighed around 360 pounds. After school, I got my highest weight ever. I got all the way up to 540 pounds. And I was just this big, big guy. And, and everywhere I went, that sort of defined me. You know, everyone would be like, hey, here's Big Mike. You know, it was always what people would say. And I actually got, got cast on a weight loss TV show. And at that time, I weighed 493 pounds. And wow. during, the, during the show, I got all the way down to 238 pounds which was incredible. It took about a year, so it was 12 months, and I lost you know, 255 pounds in one year. And for most people, that should be like your, like the, the height, you know? But what I say to people all, all the time is I wish I could have just hit pause right there, and that's where my story stopped. But unfortunately for me, that was just the start. I ended up having surgery at the end of the, of the year of, of the show where they removed about 15 and a half pounds of skin from my stomach, just from that one area. Because I was so big, I had, I had all this extra skin, and I had a lot of issues from that, and and I kind of um, couldn't do anything for about six months. I was re- really just kind of like in a bed, or I would try to exercise, and I would get sick, and because I, I had a lot of problems from it, and I started putting weight back on, and weight back on, and back on, and and I started to fall into a depression, and and I the show was actually seen by millions of people millions and they were finding me on Facebook and they were emailing me and and writing me and trying to call me like people were out there trying to like track me down and um, I had all these people saying what an an, an inspiration I was and and how I was just just an awesome person and and their, their dream was to be like me but what they didn't know at the time so much was I had put on so much weight that I was getting back up to where I was and by the time about, I don't, I'm, I'm always bad with exacts, but about two years later or so, I got on the scale again and I weighed 493 pounds again, mm. exactly. And, you know, talk about a kick in the gut. It's like all that work, all that stuff I did, and I was right back where I was. And even worse, now, not only did I have the weight back, but for the first time ever, I had all these health issues that came along I guess because I was starting to get older too. I, I ended up developing diabetes. I brought back even more intensely sleep apnea, high blood pressure, joint pain. Uh, my, my heart was beating way, way too fast because my, my body was so big. And I just was at an all time low. And to add to all that, I had people on Facebook, finding me, writing me, saying, oh, I just saw your show, because it was airing all over the place. It would air from like this country to this country to this country, and each time, it would, you know, it was almost like a reminder of what was, and then even when I would go out in uh, public, which I'd be a, you know, I would feel shame to even go out, because there'd be people who would see me, and actually, because I was on the show, they felt like it's okay to go up to you and go, hey, man, you got fat again, Mm. why? And so there was just this terrible time where I really just kind of focused on myself. I focused on my company, but I didn't want to think about my health or my life. Um, it was actually during this time I met my wife, who was incredible, and she was there for me even at, when I was at my biggest size. And you know, a long story short, which I said I would I would do, but it's, it's so hard. Um, no, you're good, man. I. I knew that I that I had to find a way to, to to change, and I had lost weight so many times, so much. My whole life it had been a constant, constant struggle. And what I finally did is I, I went and I went to a doctor and I got referred to get all these tests done. And it turned out that I had a really, really low metabolism. 
it was like a 0.6 out of a one. So the scale is zero to one and I was around a 0.6. So that meant that I was operating just above half of what I should have been. And I was recommended to get a certain type of weight loss surgery called the duodenal switch. Mm-hmm. Which are the, So I, I found out about it. It took me a year because I was like, no, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm tough. I've done it before. And I worked out and I ate good. At least I ate okay. And the weight just wouldn't come off. And times passed. I could just drop the weight and, you know, I, I would I, I'd, I'd kind of be okay. But now I could tell that something had changed. So after about a year of dealing with all this stuff, being on all kinds of prescription pills and things that I just didn't want to be on, I went ahead and got the surgery, which is only done about 1% to 2% of the time in all types of uh, weight loss surgeries. And I did that, and man, it reset everything for me. Like my entire life changed. I um, I ate less, of course, but I, it, it balances it out so you don't absorb all that you eat to make your body um, burn about what it should burn. And I, my metabolic score went up, went up all the way up de- now to a .96, which is almost perfect. Um, and weight-wise, I, I went all the way from 493 pounds. As of right now, I weigh 205 pounds. Wow. The best I've ever weighed. Um, my diabetes gone, sleep apnea gone, high blood pressure gone. I'm in a completely great health. I, I've tr- truly changed everything, and I really owe it a lot of it to the surgery, not just for controlling how m- much I eat, which is what people always think, but. For, for helping to reset me to be like a regular person. That's that's all I all all I ever hoped for was just to be a regular person that could just eat and not pack on weight because that's that's how it was for me my whole life. And I'll tell you, it's really changed things because now I go, I share that story on the stages, um, I talk to people, and I'm really a proponent for doing whatever you have to do to get yourself out of the spot that that you're in. There's always there's a group of people that look down on weight loss surgery or they look down on the way that you choose to do whatever it is you're trying to do. But what I realized is it's your life, it's your health, it's up to you. And no one's gonna, you know, stand there over your grave and go, Oh, I you know, at least he didn't get weight loss surgery. He tried on his own. You know, like mm-hmm. there's there's a point in time where you have to do what it takes. And for me, that was the answer. I'm not saying that's the answer for everyone, but for, for me, that was a big move and it changed my entire life. And, and, and I learned a lot from that time period, for sure. Yeah, and you got a really good attitude about it, man. And I really appreciate that. Um, that's a lot to go through. And you, you tried the other way, you know, and guys, I seriously, it. yeah, it's, yeah. listen to the story. And, and I got to tell you, Michael, you look amazing right now. Simply the pictures I'm looking at, you look absolutely amazing. How do you feel? Thank you. Yeah, I feel incredible. Like I didn't think that I could have this much energy to be honest, my entire life. I always thought that I was really lazy, you know, cause I wouldn't want to do stuff. I'd be, oh, I'm just, but honestly, what I found out is I was just really big. So, so much of my energy was being spent on just standing up, sitting down, walking around that I had no idea that life could be this awesome and you could have this much energy, you know? I, honestly, I, I did not never realize that. Yeah. Um, I got to tell so. you, I've never been really classified as overweight or anywhere near obese, but I have been to the point to where I just had like zero energy and it had everything to do with my meal plan, with my nutrition and my lack of exercise my lack of just moving my body uh and I, you know i'm the same way i go through all of these fluctuations in my life and i get too busy in work and too busy in business and and then kind of put other things to the side so it's kind of a, a i call it a counterbalance there's really not a whole lot of balance in our lives there's more of a counterbalance as you're focusing on certain things and through all of this you was also um, battling, uh, you know, your stutter, you overcame a stutter as well. Was it really bad at, the, at that point? Yeah, my stutter has, was probably, I would say always, um, not awful. 
um, it was kind of more of a thing that I had to just to really cope with. And I, I actually went to a, a school at the at uh, Eastern Virginia, and they had like a like about a two week program. And I went there a year ago or so, and it helped out a ton. Because before, what I, what I would do when I would talk, I would have to be constantly in my head, thinking ahead on what I was trying to say and finding the words that I knew I wouldn't be able to say, and then coming up with other ways to say the same thing that I would like to say. And so in some ways, it actually improved my vocabulary, and it also, I, I would almost feel like it made me smarter, and it made me a faster thinker, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it also drained me. It was a lot of energy, and, and I, re, you know, whenever I get tired, it gets a lot harder you know that's why I don't Mm -hmm. try to schedule these things early or late you know Um, but yeah so for me now I've just learned um, some really cool strategies on how to breathe and how to speak um, in a a more uh, controlled way so yeah is that's also a thing you know but what I realized because I can recall being a kid and praying to God just saying God why did I have to be fat and have a stutter? Couldn't it just be one or the other? <laughs> like I, re- <laughs> I recall that, you know. Yeah. And, and um, but at the same time, now I look back and I think, you know, we all have issues. Mm-hmm. So my mine happened to be more outward, the right. weight and the stutter. But sometimes I think the more painful ones are the people that hide them and they can't be seen. And, and then because there's a lot more, I think, shame with those. So. I'm I'm thankful in a sense that I had something that I had to fight for and I had to fight to win and and I think that's the point of life you're dealt a certain hand and your job is to play that hand the, the best way you possibly can and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I dig it, man. And I find that very interesting because many years ago a soldier that worked for me had a seriously bad stutter. She seriously stuttered and it was so frustrating for her and it was it was frustrating for me to watch quite frankly. And, and to listen to her and to have a conversation with her. And extremely intelligent, of course. And the military actually paid for her to go to a school. And I think it was in Virginia, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. And literally, it was just a couple of weeks. She came back almost like I couldn't even recognize her. She had so much more confidence. She, it was just, yeah. it, it, I just, I feel the feelings right now. It's just so amazing. And it was like the stutter was almost completely gone until she got kind of flustered and she couldn't like you said concentrate and towards the end of the day you know you you get drained doing the things that we do and uh it started kind of slowly coming back and she had to you know really focus more on it but i was so amazed at what they could do in just a couple weeks Uh, very very amazing yeah it's i mean the truth about a a stutter is there is no cure for it you're always going to have it. They don't really know why yet. They still haven't been able to uh, figure it out. They did isolate, they believe, a, a part of the DNA that causes it. But, um, you know, for for me, I, I shoot for just doing the best I can every day. And I'm going to stutter. And the truth is, we all stutter, actually. But people that, that have a stutter are much more aware of it. You know, um, that was a big uh, breakthrough for me. I would, you know, the guy that taught my uh, my uh, school, he said, you know, he, he would put people on and say, here, watch this guy talk. And it would be like this professional speaker. And he would say, sit and count the positives or the stutters. And it would be way more than you ever would have thought of. Mm-hmm. But I think when you're a stutterer in your mind, you picture that everyone else speaks 100 percent perfectly. Right. But in reality, we don't. We're always we're trying to talk, we're thinking of things to say, that didn't come out right, let me change this topic, you know. There's all of these things that are happening, so a big part of me for my breakthrough was just being aware that it's okay to stutter. It's not even that big of a deal. It's not like it's not like everyone's here going, oh, he just now stuttered, you know. <laughs> um, so that was a that was a big thing for, for me. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up, actually, and I, and I, I realized this before, but you brought it to my mind is, as I've been doing this podcast for the last year and a half and I go and edit, when I first got started, I used to, when I looked at the edited uh, audio clip, you could see all these lines where all the edited and I'm cutting out parts where I just kind of stuttered. I, I kind of um, 
said something like I'm doing right now. I wasn't really thinking straight. I said something that didn't make sense or I, uh, or stuff like this. And yeah. over the course of the last, well, about a year into it, I noticed I have less of those edit marks because I'm paying more attention to that. And I realized that there's certain things that I say and the way I say them, and I repeat myself a lot of times in certain areas, and I've just kind of adjusted to that over the years, and it's I've learned from it. So that's pretty cool that you brought that up. Yeah. So, nice. you know, you have, I mean, goodness, and you, you dropped out of high school, went back to get your degree, go to college, worked your way up the corporate level from, from bot, very bottom, I mean, stock and shelves to clear to the top of the spectrum, and now built this $25 million, you know, your, your company's on track to, what, do $25 million at this point in gross revenues? Yeah, Man, listen, we just did that. Yeah, talk we, to me about we that just journey a little that. bit. Yeah, we hit 25 at the end of 2017, which is our best year ever. And, and, you know, we hope to do 50 this year. It's what we would like to do. Of course, we we all would. But, yeah, um, you know, I I definitely had a unique journey of, of my own, right? Um, I, I grew up with an incredible family. My, my mom, I had um, you know, two awesome aunts, my grandparents, my uncles, you know, all, we all grew up on the same exact street. Um, my dad, he wasn't the best uh, for me as far as being there. And, and he ended up, um, he actually left when I was about nine. And I actually haven't seen him since I was 10. That was the last time I saw him. So it's been quite some time. And, um, but the, the cool part is I had so much family that I, I think they kind of filled in the gaps of not having that dad in the, in the home. Um, and so I grew up in a very unique way, you know, with all of us on the same street. I had all my, my brother, sister, like there was like 13 of us cousins, you know, all in Mm -hmm. the street. So, um, just always around people, always able just to go somewhere, have fun, to have someone to do something with pretty much anytime you would want. And as I got older though it was tough because we didn't have a lot of stuff you know my my mom worked extremely hard I mean she there was probably a 10 year period when all of us were young where she worked at least probably 80 hours a week every single week just so we could have more things and be able to do more things and I mean she really sacrificed for for me to to get to be where I'm at um at the same time, with her not being there and, and her kind of, you know, having to be gone, um, I think especially as I became a teenager, it got really hard to want to be focused on school. I was more thinking like I want to get a job, I want to make some income. Um, I was really, really bo- uh, bored with school too. I, I would go and just think, wow, this is just a time waster. And I actually ended up dropping out my senior year. But only for I dropped out for about six weeks, um, and thankfully my mom just like threw a fit. She's like, "You better go back. You better go back." And and I actually went and took a practice uh, GED test, which is a you know like a kind of a different way to get your diploma. And I passed it. And the, but the girl that gave me the test, she was like, "You're way too smart to be here. Go back to school and do it the right way." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh." So I ended up going back after about the, you know, being out for about six or eight weeks. And um, I did finish it up. I graduated. I actually had a high enough GPA and a high enough SAT score that I got a scholarship to go to college. So I, it's, just kind of, it's just weird. I, I mean, I, I look back, I was so young. I didn't really understand things now as I do. And mm. so, you know. <laughs> yeah, so many things you do when you're young and you're like, what in the world was I thinking, right? But anyway, um, so from that point, I kind of went back and forth to school as, as I could. I wasn't ready. I was not disciplined. I did not take personal responsibility for anything. And that really continued till I was about 24. I just kind of, I spent 18 to 24. I almost call them my lost uh the lost years and 
and during that time I, I was trying more of the artist creative stuff I was in a band I was trying to write books I um, I would work little odd jobs um, I didn't really have a purpose I don't feel like at that time it was just a big struggle for me and yeah I had all kinds of little odd jobs I I worked at a plastics factory for a, a bit where we made like forks and spoons and I, I did a job where um, where I worked at a Walmart um, I worked in a recording studio so I just did all these kind of weird kind of odd jobs and and nothing I did ever really stuck I didn't really have passion for any of those things and Finally, I met someone who um, invited me to come work for her company that she owned because she had read a, a blog post that I wrote. So for fun, I started a blog in 2006 called OnlyOneMike.com, which is still up to this day. I still actually use that site. And um, she read a post of mine on there, and she, she's the one who, who emailed me and said, hey, I think you would be a really good copywriter, which I didn't know what that was at the time. And mm -hmm. um, you know, she's thankfully enough. She brought me into her company, and she owned a publishing company that sold how-to info on all sorts of kinds of uh, topics, especially personal development and also how to start your own business. So I, I learned from her directly for about three or four years, and that was when I really uh, transformed from basically a kid who didn't know what he was trying to do into a man who understood that you have to work, you have to put in time, you have to make sacrifices, and, and you just have to sh show up every day. And that was a big, big change for me. And so when that company ended, um, I I actually went to on the t TV show, and then I came back from the show, and then I ended up beginning my own company. And you know, through many ups, downs, and all kinds of things, um, you know, we're here now and, and, you know, doing the things that, that w we do. And I'm now the CEO, um, which before I just had a partner and I, and, uh, he became COO now and I'm the CEO. So this year we're really focused on doing it right, getting everything organized. Um, what I found is true for the majority of things, whether it's our personal life whether it's our re, our relationships if our if it's our businesses whatever it is we're we're constantly bringing things from chaos to order you know mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what I'm doing right now this year especially I'm focusing on you know taking that path from chaos to order with the company with by restructuring by bringing in the right people for the right jobs by hiring and, and kind of creating flow charts for all of our processes, you know, all those things that when you first start up anything, it's chaos, you know, it's one person trying to do 20 jobs and then it's two or three people perhaps. And so now we're at a point where we're expanding, we're growing and, and we're trying to really uh, t turn ourselves into a machine. Yeah. And now what you're doing basically, as I understand it is helping business owners find freedom and basically scaling their business how's all that working out yeah so we have a few different companies and one of the companies that i focus on is um we do some advertisements for others you know where we'll run ads for them and things like that but we've really pivoted um especially in the last year or two to be more of a and i hate to say the word traditional Traditional because it's not but in the sense it is a traditional publishing company so what we do now is we go out there and we look for experts um, we call them brand partners and these are people that have specialized skill sets or specialized knowledge especially with unique or different or outside of the box thinking on how to start or grow and a business type because what I've seen over the last you know I've been doing this now for 12 years every year that goes by it becomes more and more obvious to me that the old way has changed mm -hmm. and the, the the whole you know just having a job doing the thing that you do for 30 or 40 years and, re and then retiring is just not gonna be there anymore so 
I believe in in finding what the next big thing will be and getting out there in front of it so you can profit from it. So we go out there now and we find people that have learned how to start an e-commerce store or people that know how to invest in real estate or people that know how to buy and sell companies without having to invest a bunch of your own capital. And we help these people sell their products and their services. We pretty much handle marketing and the sales and operations and the finance and the credit card processing and and all the things it takes to run a company and we allow the expert to just be the expert to provide the content to if we do, if we sell an, an, an event they'll go, they'll go speak at, at, at the event and we do everything else and, and that for us has been really a huge breakthrough because it just makes sense because our skill set is tr- is uh, is scaling selling stuff you know mm-hmm. whatever that that stuff is um so that that's become our focus and it's re- really going well and, and i i can see us now in the next three three to four years you know right now we have three different brand partners i would like to see that grow to 10 um and each time we do that we open up a new uh customer base we open a new market share and um, you know we have our processes extremely, extremely dialed in. So it's a, a very, very f- f- fun time. Man, I absolutely love the creativity and all of that. And I got so many other questions, but we just don't have time for this show right now to to go into all that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pivot into our pay it forward uh, time of the show. Are you ready to do that? Let's do it. Outstanding. So share one to three actionable steps with men of abundance that they can take today. Yeah, the top thing that I'll that, that I'll share is I, I I believe that everyone should create what I call a super six item. So I have a template that I've created that I use, and I and it just outlines for me each day what are the top six things that I should focus on and accomplish that day. And before I go to bed the night before, I'll create my super six for the next day and I'm telling you I started that probably back in 2008 and it has just changed my life because so many times before I would just sit there and be like I and be like I, I know I'm supposed to be doing something but what what is it you know and now I always know I know exactly what I have to do I can check it off the box when it's done and as as an achiever that's a big thing for me I love to check things off like that's done that's done that's done. Yeah. So writing down your six most important tasks for, for that day is huge. And you get done what you can and what's not done, you add it to the next day and you and you bring it up up the list. You know, that's that's a very, very big thing for me. The the other one is is to always be taking action. You know, so many people like we talked about early on, we love to read stuff, to learn, to go to events. And sadly, probably 80 percent of people, that's where they stop. Mm -hmm. They learn, but they don't they don't apply. You know, so it's a a big thing for me is to is to take action. There's a quote that I came up with a long time ago, which I really love, even though it's from me, which always makes me sound a little pompous. But I always say life rewards those who take action not those who take notes mm. and boy it's just true you know <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then at events i always say now write that down <laughs> yeah. um you know but it's a uh, it's a very very true thing so um yeah that's my i'll, I'll, I'll stop there but that's yeah that's my. awesome i absolutely love that you said that's funny because just this morning i was thinking about this and it was it rung into my head as i was getting ready this morning because i had so much already ready for the night prior and that is, I've heard this from somewhere, I don't know who originally coined it, but a great morning and a great day starts with a good night prior or something mm. to that effect. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to plan it. it. You know, everything from starting your workout. You know, if you get up in the morning and go, man, I, I, you know, I, where are my shoes? You know, what shorts am I going to wear? No, lay that stuff out in the evening. Lay it out in the evening. Have it there for you ready. If you're like me, you're getting up in the dark and everybody else is still asleep. So, you know, just those yeah. little things make a huge difference and then having that list as well so you already kind of talked about a little bit of it but what other daily habits make the biggest impact in your life you know i think for me 
getting up at the same time every day has been a huge thing for me. For years, I sort of you know struggled with that because I had this idea, oh, I'm a creative person, so I stay up till two or three a.m. and I, I just work all n- night and and I, I think that maybe when you're young you can do that, but I think as I've gotten older, I actually really enjoy the consistency of a, of having a set a schedule. Like I technically don't have to, right? I could just show up when I want, but I I really enjoy having a set time where I, I do the same type stuff. And, um, that for me has been, has, has been big and I, and I'm sure that's a very small thing, but for me, it's, it's been huge. Yeah, it is something simple, but it does make a huge impact to have that routine for sure. What are you reading or listening to that you would recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Yeah. So right now I'm actually going through a book called the 46 rules of genius. And I just got started on it. But so far, I really, really enjoy the book because it kind of just goes over very, very practical things like do this. You know, here's a tip or a trick. So I enjoy books like that, books that actually teach you what to do instead of just Mm kind of theory stuff. And I also have just ordered a book. I haven't got it in yet, so I don't really know how it'll be yet. But it's by a guy named Jordan Peterson, and it's called 12 Rules, I think. And it's basically things that he believes that you should do to live a very good life. So I look forward to that book when it shows up. Outstanding. Yeah. Thanks for recommending those. And I'll have those uh, listed in the show notes at menofabundance.com. So what do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance, Michael? You know, I think it's a tough question because I think there's different things for different people but mm-hmm. I, I think the biggest one of all is is people not believing in themselves and not going big when they're given the chance playing small ball you know a bunch of times we end up you know playing a small ball and not taking that big swing when the time comes so I tell people all the time you know at some point you have to just go big yeah. you know and, and that's um you know, yeah, that's it for me. Absolutely. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you? For me, it, it means being abundant in all different areas, trying to not just focus on one or two, but keeping an eye on all of them. You're, you're not going to necessarily win big in everything every single day. And life is a series of choices between putting time towards family, towards business, towards your spouse, towards your health. There's all these different areas. And I have a coach who actually helps me keep track of all the different areas that I've deemed important. And I don't always do it right. I, I screw up a lot. Um, but I, I try my best to, to keep track of all the di- different areas and reorder them every three to six months based on how I'm pro- progressing in those areas yeah and having a coach to help you do that or an accountability partner or a mentor or somebody uh to see from the outside in and and keep you on track is extremely powerful and extremely important as far as i'm concerned yeah agreed so we're going to close this up michael it's been an amazing conversation we could just continue and go on for another hour at the very least i'm sure but what did we not talk about that you'd like to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today you know, I think I feel like we had a great talk and we kind of went over all kinds of stuff. So, I, you know, the, the biggest thing that I'll come back to again, which I which I kind of already said, but, you know, I just want people to know that it's not about having a big win. It wasn't like I can't point to a day when I was this kid struggling you know, trying to get by to be being the CEO of a, of a large company. You know, it it wasn't like there was one day like, Oh, June 3rd, 2010, this thing happened. You know, Mm -hmm. it was a series of daily progressive steps. You know, I really believe that change happens in small doses. And, and I think that's the real secret to, to success. And the reason why it's not taught in that way is because it's not fun. It's not sexy, right? We humans don't want to be told, hey, you can change. Just give it five years, right? Like that's not going to sell 
books for the most part. So I, I think in sometimes we we look for these ahas, we look for these, oh my gosh, this just changed everything. But the reality is is that life is progressive, achievement is progressive, and it's up to us to iterate and to learn to love the process, learn to fall in love with the daily grind. I don't mm-hmm. like the word grind though, but mm-hmm. it, it kind of no, pops in my head. Though. But you know, there's there's definitely you've got to do your part as well. And it's not to say that there can't be rapid improvements. That's obviously possible. And I've seen those even in my own life, but at the same time, when you when your whole goal is rapid improvement, if you really think about it, what you're truly saying is I want the benefit without the sacrifice. Mm. And we know just the way the things are, you know, the way the world's been set up. Usually, if you want benefit, it's going to require sacrifice. If you're going to reap, you have to sow, right? That's a law of the world. So you, you've got to be prepared to sow so you can reap. And, and that's um, that's my parting piece of advice. Man, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, very well said as well. So we're going to have all of your social media links linked up in the show notes. Um, we're going to have only one Mike.com linked up over there. All that stuff. Everything that I have here the Interview Valet has provided to me uh, to share on your behalf. Is there any other way that you'd like to uh, have our abundant leaders get in contact with you or just check out what it is that you got going on? Yeah, so to definitely go to my site. I also always like to give away something free just to kind of be cool and give back. I, I don't really have a lot of things to sell at this point, honestly. I just okay. kind of do this for the fun of it, for the practice, to get out there. And so um, what I've done is I put up a special page just for the people that are on your podcast. And it's onlyonemike.com slash abundance. So only one mic, that's O-N-E-1, onlyonemike.com slash abundance. And what I give away there are actually two things. Um, the first is I give away a book that I wrote called How to Obliterate the Blank Page. So if you're anyone that has to write anything at any time and you're starting from a blank page, especially if you're trying to write ads or things to promote yourself or to, to sell yourself, or, you know, I break down sort of the five key components. And if you follow along to this short book, it's only about maybe, I think, 40 pages. Um, if you follow along to, to that, you will never have to face a blank page again. It's super easy. It's a, it's a process that I use all the time. And when you sign up for that, I also will email you my Super 6 template, the same one that I use every day. I actually create it for my employees so they have full access to it, and I'll give that to your people too. They get it completely free, no strings attached or anything like that. Um, it's a it's a great little tool that I've had a lot of people email me and send it back, and, or, or email me back and say, "Wow, this, this has changed everything for me." And it's such a simple thing that is easy to implement. So they can get all that by going to onlyonemike.com/abundance. Oh, Michael, I greatly appreciate that, man. I really do. And it's those simple things that really do make the biggest impact in your life, man. Like you said, and your as you're ending here is it's those those small wins that lead to success and yep. small, consistent wins. Absolutely love it. Thanks again. Great conversation, man. I love what you got going on. Congratulations on all of your success, everything that you've overcome. And man, just go out there and live your life of abundance and keep paying it forward, brother. Thank you, Wally. Had a great time. My pleasure. Aloha. Man, I got to tell you, I am so inspired by Michael's story on so many levels. It reaffirms my own abundant beliefs and mindset, and I trust that it does yours as well. So be abundant in your life today. Pay it forward and share Men of Abundance with others so they too can get this inspirational story in their earbuds and possibly, just possibly, get their life on track to where they want it to be. Now, go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. 
We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.